What's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about transgender mental health. As you can see, I'm in a different location. It is super peaceful, very demure, very relaxing. <laughs> transgender mental health. We overlook it a lot. When it comes to being transgender, there really is no specific way to have a successful transition, but there is one thing. And I really think that your mental health needs to be in check in order to have a successful transition or just a successful life as a trans person. So with that being said, I have four specific things that I wish I kind of handled differently and took better care of when it came to my transgender mental health because it definitely put me in a lot of depressed situations and kind of had me teeter-tottering in the beginning of my transition on whether or not I should detransition. And I think this is super, super important because so many people think that trans people detransition because they realize they were never a different gender or just all of the right-wing people like to use it as a oh, see, I told you trans people don't exist, or oh, I told you it's all in your head, you made a mistake, I'm so happy you found God, blah, blah, blah. When that's not the case at all, a lot of times people will actually detransition because of these four reasons. Let's talk about it. As a trans person, we all tend to want to look a certain way. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes it becomes very toxic because we try so hard to look a certain way and when we don't it can be very very depressing it can make us hate the way we look um, it can make us get into unhealthy habits to achieve an unrealistic look and it becomes a a competition for some people to want to look the best or want to be perceived as looking like the best trans representation and that's not accurate at all because everyone looks different whether you're trans or not, there's no specific way to look. Um, and so appearance is a really big thing because when I was in the beginning of my transition, I was struggling so badly trying to figure out who I was through my appearance. And if you've been around for years on my social media, you know that I've had so many different eras of my life. I'm 30 years old now, if you didn't know. And so for about 12 years, um, I've had a lot of different eras. Right now, I'm in my, a lot of people think to call it like a, a cowboy phase, but this one's not a phase. This one, I'm, I'm genuinely vibing with the, the way I present myself. I enjoy the way I dress. I like to be different. I like to live outside of a stereotype. I'm kind of show people that people that look like me can dress this way too, and it, you don't have to live within your stereotypes. And I take pride in the way I look because I'm unique, I'm different, and so are all of you. Within the trans community, it is very popular, I guess, to be a fitness influencer and stuff. And before I continue with this, I wanna say I'm not judging anyone who is a fitness influencer. Like, that's awesome, and I know a lot of people have a passion in that, but because some people are transgender fitness influencers, Again, it goes hand in hand with the appearance and trying to keep up with the appearance. And when people can't maintain an appearance that these trainers can, it can put people in a very bad mental state and it can make them go back into unhealthy habits trying to keep up with this, this image. And like, I'll be honest, it's very hard to maintain a bodybuilder physique. I've never achieved it. I don't care to achieve it. I just like to, I guess, look to par with living a healthy lifestyle. And so when there are influencers, trans or not, online keeping up with this amazing chiseled physique 365 days a year, that's super rare. When you are an average person like myself, that's not, it's not impossible, but it's also not super realistic if that's not your passion when it comes to fitness and dieting. So when you're constantly trying to keep up with an image that's not technically how you normally live your life, again, you fall back into depression, anxiety, and unhealthy habits. This one's super important. I think this is one of the big reasons why a lot of people 
may detransition and the fear of disobeying your family and your friends you guys now this one is super hard and i don't want to like make the situation light because it's not it's a dense conversation um when you have to make the decision on whether or not to kind of leave your family behind and pursue your transition you have to remember that transitioning is this is something for you and only you it's a journey for you and only you and you cannot let somebody outside of yourself dictate what you do with your body when you pass you pass alone this life that you're living is yours and yours only nobody else's so it's crazy to me when when people will allow their family to dictate what they do with their own body now as a child kind of a different conversation obviously that's a lot harder because these people are taking care of you hmm. that dog does not sound happy when you're a child it's obviously a lot different because these you're living with these people they're taking care of you they're responsible for you but they are not responsible for you forever and you have to remember that so even if you have to wait a little bit until you are of age just always keep in mind that this is going to be your life longer than it is their life obviously we don't want to lose family we don't want to lose friends but when you do grow up that's your turn to surround yourself with people who are going to love you regardless of how you dress who you love if you transition if you don't transition like those are the people that matter so fortunately i come from a family who is pretty good when it comes to the trans stuff they would never disown me they don't misgender me they they're all on board with it um they're very uneducated like i'm not gonna <laughs> act like they're not but like once i educate them then they're good i still had the opportunity to create my own family even with an accepting family i still grew up and i still created my own family yeah it's a beautiful thing when you grow up and you're able to create your own your own family it makes the idea of transitioning a lot easier because you no longer have to force yourself in a bubble of people who don't get it don't care to get it and are never gonna get it worrying about disobeying family and stuff it's something you have to learn to accept that could be a possibility to the people who try and say that detransitioners do it because they never were trans and there's no such thing as transitioning or being trans mind you a lot of these people even though they detransition they're still trans so keep that in mind constantly seeking validation and acceptance in every situation of your life you guys there are bad apples in every situation there are going to be bad apples everywhere you cannot avoid them i'm sorry to break the news to you but you cannot avoid them um, I've made the mistake of constantly trying to avoid situations like this and it just made me very depressed because I felt like I couldn't be anywhere without somebody constantly trying to put me down, trying to invalidate my feelings, trying to misgender me on purpose. Like, you're always going to come across somebody once they find out that you're trans, that you're always going to come across at least one person who is against it or just doesn't understand it and needs more time to understand it going to family get-togethers your family might be the most loving and supporting family you could have ever asked for but then you go on a vacation to go visit your aunt claire in south carolina and she's not with it again there's always going to be bad apples doesn't mean your whole entire family's transphobic doesn't even mean your your aunt clara is transphobic maybe she just hasn't been around you for years on end and has never been around trans people so she just doesn't get it you can't run away from every single situation that is against you and then if you're on social media and you get people saying horrible things the internet is the internet even if you're not trans people are going to be on there just bullying to bully so when people ask me how i deal with all the haters online they're nothing but keyboard warriors it really doesn't bother me i don't see them in person and at the end of the day there's bad apples everywhere and when you're on the internet a lot of bad apples seem to come forward because it's the internet so you also have to keep that in mind just because you see all the hate i get on social media when i tell you it is so much different in the real world i never i i can't even tell you the last time 
I've been misgendered or had a situation where I went in the bathroom and somebody could tell, like that doesn't happen for me. Um, I live my life and my life online looks so much different than it does in person. I live a very stealth life in person and nobody bothers me. Those are just four things that I could think of that in particular pertain to me and what I've dealt with and struggled with throughout my trans journey and my mental health and with therapy and just growing up and living my trans experience longer and longer. It just helped me realize that these things can't be avoided and they should not deter you from making a decision on whether or not you should transition because only you know what's right for you and your body. Only you know what your identity is. Nobody else knows it and they won't know it until you live your truth. And if you run from your truth, you're just helping them out. So let me know if you guys can relate to any of these. Let me know if you guys struggle with any of these. And uh, like, comment, subscribe. We are still on the road to 100,000 subscribers and we are so close. Until next time, peace. Whew.